Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure and vehicle review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman Beyond Batman and Batmobile 2 pack. Now, this is a Walmart and McFarlane Toy Store exclusive. I pre ordered one of each one at Walmart, one at McFarlane, and here's the one for McFarlane Toys. There's also an Amazon exclusive version that doesn't have lights and sounds. Of course, that means this one does. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, this is part of the Gold Label collection. A Gold Label is simply a retailer exclusive. Whether it be Target or GameStop, this one is shared between Walmart and McFarlane. Batman Beyond, DC Multiverse, Batman and the Batmobile. Here are the measurements of the vehicle. And it has lights and sounds. Here's the vehicle. Here's Batman. Here's the top of the box. You can see the figure and the actual vehicle. And then here's the back of the package. Looks like the vehicle, the figure, and there he is in the cockpit. At the bottom, there is a barcode, if that helps anybody. So with no further ado, let's open it up. All right, now we have this vehicle and a figure out of the package. Here they are with all their accessories laid out. We have some pieces that need attached to the Batmobile. We have a display stand, collector's card, and then we have a couple alternate hands for the figure. In this video, we're going to take a look at both the figure and the vehicle. We'll check out the accessories, action features, measurements, all that stuff, and we'll compare them with a bunch of other vehicles and action figures. Let's go ahead and start off by knocking out Batman real quick. So here's a look at this Batman figure. I'm not actually sure what it's sort of referencing or being homage to. It's a very weird paint job. Red and black on this Batman. I think it's on the Batman Beyond body that we've already seen, but we'll check that in depth in a second. And he has these plastic wings attached. And I can only imagine the wings have to be removable, because how else could he fit the Batmobile? But we'll check all of that out in a little bit. In the meantime, let's take a look at him. So starting with his face here. I don't know, almost looks like it's smiling? Kind of half smirk. That has to be a new sculpt. Very tall ears. The body is very lean. I'm not sure if it's done on the existing Batman Beyond body or the Neo-Gothic one, as I don't have that guy yet. Looks like he has some sculpted abs. Paint jobs. Different. Cool, but different. Double jointed knees and elbows. He's got these wings on the back that, of course, have articulation. It's cool. I assume it's from the Batman Beyond comics. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I think it's a new head sculpt. But like I said, I don't have the newest Batman Beyond figures either. Definitely has that familiar Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond head sculpt, though. And then here's the figure, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. And now for the accessories, starting off with the Borg stuff. Typical McFarland display stand we've seen a bunch of times before. And then we have the collector's card, which is a card for both the car and the figure. Honestly, they could have given us two cards, but whatever. Batman and the Batman Beale from Batman Beyond. On the back, there is a description. If you want to read that, pause now. And for his hands, he has a total of four hands, two right hands, and two left hands. Here's a look at his first pair of hands, this pair of gripping hands with trigger fingers. And here he is with his second pair of hands. His right hand is a totally flat, open hand, and his left hand has a battering permanently attached. Now let's talk about his wings for a sec. They're made of hard plastic, and they're not the traditional Batman Beyond look of wings. They connect differently than the previous ones before. On mine, this one is kind of loose. It stays where I want it to go, but I'm concerned it won't for long. This one is a lot better. They can go up as far as this, sort of his flight pose. They can be down completely straight to the bottom, and they can even come a little bit more inside. It doesn't look like these will be removable. With the previous set, I was able to just heat them up and pop them out. This is a little bit different the way they're connected inside there. Be nice if the whole thing came off, but that's not how that works. Probably could pop it off the hot water. I don't really want to mess with it because I don't know, maybe I will, we'll see. So part of my point to that is will this figure fit in the bound bill? And we will check that out with the giant wings. It looks like he has to because they're not removable in a traditional fashion. There's no way they intend you to boil water, put them in there, pop the wings out, put them in the car, and put them back on there. Now, to me, it doesn't even really matter because I bought this Batmobile to use with the regular version of Batman Beyond, the black version. But, of course, that guy has wings permanently attached as well. 
So I imagine this car is going to be pretty spacious and allow him to fit with the wings. So just to add to his wings, I did try to put him into the Batmobile and he was too large to fit with these wings. So I started looking, there's no way they actually expect you to boil this, so I just sort of yanked it a little bit. And yes, this part comes off, and the wings come off pretty easily at that point as well. And then, bam, you've got your Batman figure, stripped down, slim, able to fit into his vehicle. And now to check out the reuse between this new repaint of Ben Beyond and the original version, which is the one that I'm going to put in the car. So the head sculpts are different. This guy has that little sort of grin and the ears seem longer. The torso piece also different. He's got this bat symbol sculpted on top. And even what's below looks like it has a little bit different sort of muscle sculpt. The stomach might be the same. It's kind of hard to tell with that paint job. Seems a little more defined here, but that might just be the paint. So I'm going to say it probably is the same. The diaper piece looks to be different. This seems more a little more traditional, at least what I would call that. The legs, the feet are different. This one has a much bigger point to it. Ah, uh, these are the John Kent legs. So this might actually be the entire John Kent body. Interesting, I was not expecting that. It's such an odd thing to do. Why not just use this guy? It makes much more sense. The arms, they actually look to be new. This guy has the sort of sculpted stuff on here. And this guy looks to be smooth. Even the hands are different. Interesting, he's got some little knuckle things. And then of course, the way that the wings attach in the back, very, very different. His, maybe this whole piece will come off, I don't know. But his, you can just sort of pop the wings out if you get them soft. And if you get them soft, you can pop them back in very easily. I've taken these in and out numerous times by dipping them in boiling water. So surprisingly, they have used parts of John Kent here, which has that stupid little sculpted piece here, and he doesn't. I just don't really know why. I guess maybe to get rid of these ugly ball joints. I don't know. At this point, I guess I need to check out this Bound Beyond with John Kent. Curious about reuse, differences, similarities, all that good stuff. Obviously, head's completely different. The top part of the torso, honestly, I think it's the same. That's I kept looking at the little muscle details here. They're definitely the same on the two guys, so they just replace this sculpted Superman logo with the sculpted Batman logo, kind of covering up everything. Looks like it's the same stomach. Different diaper belt, the arms, oh, there it is, didn't notice it before. That inaccurate sculpted thing that was only accurate to one figure and they've used it like 10, 12 times at this point. Looks like the arm is different from the forearm down. The legs, definitely the same, you can see the kneecap, very flat. Once again, that inaccurate piece that was only accurate one time and they've used so many times and the feet seem to be the same. Interesting, I was not expecting it to be on the John Kent body. That is for sure. Here are all the figures so far that utilize the John Kent body. There are 14 of them. I'm sure they're not even close to done yet. It is not a bad body for a younger, leaner type figure. I wish they would just smooth those couple inaccuracies on the bicep and the sort of ankle area. For the most part, this is appropriate for most of these figures. I don't think it was appropriate for Jim Gordon as Batman, but I'm okay with most of the rest. Well, not Batman Beyond either. And now that we're taking a pretty good look at the figure and his accessories, let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 6.9 inches tall, which can translate to 17.5 centimeters. If we go to the top of the ears, about 7.4 inches tall. And for his articulation, starting with his head, of course, it can rotate side to side. Mine's pretty tight. Look up and down, pretty good amount. Tilt his head from one side to the other. If you want to get him to a flight pose, I mean, I guess his flight pose is a little bit different. He doesn't go like this. He'll just sort of be floating there using little rockets under his feet and stuff. Shoulders and a ball joint goes about 90 degrees, up, down, around. He's got that butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest, increasing the range of motion and covering the gap that would be there. Bicep cut. Double jointed elbows. His wrist can rotate. It's hinged torso. He has a ball joint. Rotate around. Forward and back. Another one in his waist. Rotate around. Forward and back. 
between the two, pretty good range of motion. Of course, we saw how the wings were articulated. Legs complete as a splits, McFarland style hip joints, rotation, minimal at best. They go forward all the way, back not much, double jointed knees, and his ankle. Forward and back, rotate, tilt rock, and toe articulation. Now let's check him out with some other McFarland Batman Beyond fears. Here he is next to the first two. The one on the left has a no mouth, sort of a flat mouth. That one was, I believe, a Tardy exclusive, part of the Build-A-Figure wave. And then the one on the right has the mouth, a little bit closer to the TV show. Both these are from the Batman Beyond Future Sent comic storyline. And these are the most regular and best Jeremy Guinness Batman Beyond figures that McFarlane has released. And here he is, next to the digitized version. The one on the left was an original sort of chase version of the Batman Beyond. And the one on the right, that was a glow-in-the-dark Entertainment Earth exclusive. They also released both a blue and green version of Batman Beyond. The blue version is supposed to be Ink posing as Batman, and the green version is from the Justice Lords 2 pack. Here's this Batman, next to both versions of Batwoman Beyond. Here he is, next to my DC Direct Batman Beyond figures. And here, next to the Mezco Batman Beyond Batman. And now, with my Mattel Batman Beyond figures. Next, with an older Hasbro Batman Beyond. Here are all of my different Batman Beyond Terry McGinnis action figures. I believe I have all of them in the 6 and 7 inch scale. The next one I can think of to come out is going to be McFarland's Neo Gothic Mountain Beyond. There's a regular Planet version of that. And then Amazing Yamaguchi has one coming in the near future. Here's this Batman, next to my Terry McGinnis custom. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, let's take a look at the Batmobile. It comes in three separate pieces, also a display stand. First of all, let's put it together, get it fully assembled. And so there you have it, put the two pieces on the front of the car, and it's fully put together. Let's take a look at it. So, it's pretty small, pretty lightweight. It's got the sort of, I don't know, shiny area maybe in the show or a comic. It fit one figure sitting this way, one that way. That's sort of what it looks like to me, a second windshield. This windshield is sort of done in red. It's got these two sort of pieces coming out to the side and then two much larger pieces come out to the side over here. Nice sort of glossy, shiny on the outside here. Looks like it could be some cannons. I think it's just supposed to be the front of the vehicle. You can see the engine pieces at the bottom, and the paint job is fantastic. There's some weathering. It's silver, sort of metallic, sort of worn. Looks very nice. Looks like some exhaust, different pipes, etc. That's where the display stand goes. That's where you open up to put in the three AAA batteries that it does not come with. Here's the back side. I'm assuming some of the stuff's going to light up and look really cool. As a whole, very pleased with what I'm looking at. It looks cool. The comic version is very similar to the show version, and I appreciate that. Then we have the display stand, which comes in two separate pieces. When put together, it looks like this. Bottom, traditional Bent Beyond logo. I don't know, some sort of metallic stuff. And it's got this post. It will hold the Batmobile in midair. This Batmobile flies through the skies of Gotham City. It doesn't drive like a traditional car. Batmobile Beyond took place in the future, and there were flying cars in that universe. Very shway. Here's the car, utilizing the display stand. It looks really cool just floating in midair. It's a fantastic way to display your car. You can display it like this, or just sitting on the shelf. I like that though. You could have it in the back cave just hovering there. Figures, I don't know, staying next to it, working on it. Now to check out the measurements of this thing. So, as far as how long it is from front to back, about 21 inches long. As far as how tall it is, about four and a half inches tall. And how wide is it? About nine inches wide. And now to go over the action features. And there are really three major action features that it has. Number one, you can open the canopy. Number two, you can put a figure inside, which I guess is the same sort of action feature. And then it has lights and sounds. So, the vehicle here, you can see the cockpit with the red windows, there's a little button at the front here, press that, bam, opens up, looks pretty cool on the inside, has that sort of bent beyond digital type of look. It's pretty basic what's going on inside there, it does have an image of 
Joker from Bet Beyond Return of the Joker at the view screen there. It's got two little handles for him to hold on to, just like in the animated show. Looks really cool. Looks like we have a lot of light-up features inside of there. You can see the seat. It's all red around there. So, you can put a guy inside there, and we'll check that out in depth at the end of the video. And then, of course, lights and sounds. So at the back here, that sort of windshield-looking thing is a button to activate the lights and sounds. Press it, and you can hear all the sounds. You can see the light-up feature in the cockpit. At the back, it's lighting up. Looks really cool. Mainly the cockpit and the back. Not really much on the front, which you'd think there'd be some sort of headlights, but I guess not. And then if you press it a second time, it'll turn on without the sounds. And then you can really just sort of see what's going on. It really has a sort of digital look to it. It's pretty cool. Look at the inside, lit up very bright and nicely. And the back as well. Very cool action feature for a very cool vehicle. Press it again, and it seems like it stays on forever. The first time, it sort of times out after, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. Then press it a third time. You're back to lights and sounds. And keep in mind, there is an alternate version of this without lights and sounds. A little bit cheaper. Also doesn't come with the Batman figure. That's an Amazon exclusive. I believe it should be exactly the same besides that. Here's a look at this new McFarlane Batman Beyond Batmobile. This one is based off the comics. Next to the old Hasbro Batman Beyond Batmobile, this one is based off the cartoon. Similar design. The one by McFarland looks a little bit more realistic. The other one a little more cartoony, which makes perfect sense because one's based off a comic, one's based off a cartoon. Here it is next to the Hasbro Batmobile, sort of folded up. And that's one missed opportunity McFarland could have. They could have figured out a way to do something similar. But the design is a little bit different. And here it is next to the Hasbro Batmobile, opened up. This is how it would be flying through the skies of Gotham. I believe the other way is sort of when it's docked or landing at the Batcave. Here's a look at this Batman in the Batcave with a light-up Batmobile in the background. Now let's check it out. Next to some other vehicles, mainly some other Batman vehicles. This is the Batmobile. Sure, it's Batmobile of the future, but this is the Batmobile they had for the Batman Beyond universe. Here's McFarlane's version, next to the old Hasbro version. They're sized pretty similarly. Here it is, next to McFarland's 1989 Keaton Batmobile. They made two versions, one for the 89 film, one from the Flash movie. Here it is, next to three sleeping kittens, Jonesy, Dana, and Pamela. So sleepy. Then, next to a couple of McFarland Batman Forever Batmobiles, we have the version of Lights and Sounds, and then the Amazon Glow in the Dark version. And now, with the Dark Knight trilogies, the Tumblr, they made both a black version and a camo version. And next, with McFarlane's White Knight Batmobile. Variants aside, here are all the different versions of the Batmobile that McFarlane has made in their multiverse line. The Keaton Mobile, Batman Forever Batmobile, Batman Beyond Batmobile, the Tumblr, and the White Knight Batmobile. I do anticipate them to pretty much go through all the Batmobiles. The next one coming out is going to be from the Batman and Robin movie. I bet next after that is going to be from Batman vs Superman with a gold label Justice League version. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back and do the Pattinson version as well as the 66 version. I don't know, see a bunch more comic versions. Here it is, next to a couple of McFarland DC Direct Batman the Animated Series vehicles, the Batmobile and the Jokermobile. Here it is, with the Mattel Hot Wheels Creations, the Batman Batmobile. And here, with the Mattel Justice League Batfleck Batmobile. This is the multiverse version, not the ultimate radio controlled version. And finally, next to Mattel 2005 comic Batmobile. Now let's get some guys into this thing, and let's start off with the Batman figure that came with this Batmobile. And once you take his wings off, and yes, you can take them off without boiling water, he fits in the car just fine. His hands can even hold the handlebars if you want. But of course, this is the Batman that I want to put in this Batmobile, the traditional looking black and red Batman Beyond Batman. Here's one in there without the wings attached. And then here he is with the wings attached. If you're willing to bend the wings, slide them in there, but if you leave them too long, the wings will be bent. But he can fit in there with complete clearance. 
And I had a few requests if certain figures would fit into the Bound Beyond Batmobile. Here's a Fon Joy Batflick. I took the cloth cape off him. He fits in there pretty nicely and also has complete clearance. Here's the three Jokers Batman. This is one of McFarlane's larger Batman figures. He has a sort of rubber plastic cape and I was able to fit him in there pretty nicely. And then Batfleck from the Flash movie. And keep in mind, this guy has a cloth cape. And I have to check out some Batman figures from different companies, see which ones fit in here, and I imagine the majority of them will. Here's a DC Direct Batman. He has a sort of hard plastic or rubber cape, and is able to fit in pretty nicely. Here's a NECA Batman figure into this Batmobile. And then a Mezco Batman figure in the Batmobile. I would highly recommend not to put a figure in there that has a cloth wired cape. You know, bunch up the wire, make it look hideous. Here's a Mattel DC Universe Classics Batman here. He's got that rubber or sort of plastic cape. And I was able to get him in there pretty nice. Here's a Mafex Batman in this thing. Fits easy. And finally, an SH Figure Arts Batman. Here's a look at McFarland's entire Batman Beyond collection. We have a lot of figures, a lot of variants, but it's really just Batman, Batwoman, Shriek, Blight, Superman, and the Batman Joker robot. Of course, now we have the Batmobile to add to the collection. The Batman Beyond, both the comics and cartoons, are rich with all kind of really cool villains. There are so many more characters they could mine from Batman Beyond. So overall, this is a really cool vehicle. It's simple, it's small, it's sleek, it just looks awesome. The cockpit is very spacious, and I appreciate that. You can fit pretty much any of the McFarlane DC Multiverse figures in there, as long as their cape or wings are not too big. It just has such a cool look to it. I have mixed feelings on Batman Beyond, but one thing I'll say for sure, the designs, the atmosphere are absolutely fantastic, and this Batmobile is no exception. It looks great. It's sort of a cross between the Batwing and the Batmobile, a futuristic flying car. The action feature, light up stuff, it's good, but I feel like I need something at the front, some sort of headlights. I do wish somehow the wings folded up, but maybe it's not appropriate for the comic version. If I were to rate this thing, easy 8, maybe 8.5 out of 10. It's a fantastic vehicle. It looks great, does everything you want it to do. The flight stand is perfect, hovers in midair, accommodate any of your figures. Has sounds, has lights, what more could you ask for? So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to save with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action here and vehicle reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.